On this episode, we are going to discuss the second book of the Broken Earth trilogy, Obelisk Gate. Check out episode 9 for the first book. As usual, we are doing a non-spoiler and then later a spoiler section. Moreover, this time there are creativity points and this episode, hate points. Welcome back to the Earthquake Apocalypse, the second book of the Broken Earth, where people keep dying left and right and they're beautiful while doing it and they guys, they're made of stone and they might eat your face off and she's going down. <laughs> How are you, Pablo? <laughs> I'm alright. I enjoyed the second book more, I would think. Really? It was much more action-packed. Oh, wait. Are you serious? I was waiting to tell you that because I had to record your reaction because you apparently hated it. I didn't hate it, but I thought the exact opposite. I thought it was a book in which <laughs> absolutely nothing happens. It's just a, a huge dump, <laughs> a lore dump. So on this episode, we'd like to continue from the previous one. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to do the usual non-spoiler part about the book. So... If you're the same as I was, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll help you to decide if, if you want to keep reading. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to keep reading and Paolo was like, I'm already reading it. So that's why I read it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what I told Philip when I finished reading uh, the second book was I was kind of disappointed by it. But at the end, I think it's not a very good book. But at the mm. same time, it made me like the the trilogy more. I mean, I haven't finished the third book yet as of now, but... Mm -hmm. I think nothing happens for 90% of the book and uh, it has <laughs> some minor subplots which are completely irrelevant and not interesting. Mm. It, it just keeps teasing the lore and then giving you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. There was no point to make a whole book out of this. So the reason why I think it's uh, serving a purpose is the discussion about racism and oppression we had in the previous episode. And I was very curious if it's gonna go somewhere with it and... I feel like it went somewhere and it's justified and it's a core element of the story and all these subplots and plot lines that you didn't like are there for explanation of uh, that, I feel like. I I completely disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Yes. <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> so uh, just to explain more, I guess uh, we both hate the main character and uh, I was trying to see the purpose of the main character is to show how living in fear and having your life just devastated with this lifestyle and you know basically all these people are racist mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what i wanted to say in the beginning welcome to earthquake apocalypse where <laughs> all, everybody's racist and people who are made of stone will eat your face well, they, they will that eat your fingers I and uh, and arms first <laughs> they will eat everything but you'll get to that but anyway so i feel like this vicious cycle vicious circle they mm -hmm. portray it well like i really liked the tension in this book in the like societal like community tension and uh, I felt it was more justi justified how, like, stupid the main character mm. is. <laughs> like, she is exactly the core of the problem that she's trying to stop. And I think that's what this book did for me well. That's why I finally liked it, because this is the element how they used the oppression and racism in the story well, I felt like. Okay, so... That's, that so was my point to make. In this book, so we should say there are two essentially two main plots one with the mother and one with the daughter so that's continuing from the previous yes yeah, so you might know if you've read that i <laughs> like the, the the daughter part uh i think she was hmm. she's a very interesting character uh, like she's very she makes you like her whole story makes you feel really uncomfortable and i think it's um that part is very well written like that consequence of like oppression and uh, racism how how a child will react mm. and you know especially to something as brutal as you know her father killing her brother like and how she develops this sort of uh, stockholm syndrome first with the father and then with with mm -hmm. the guardian i think that that was um very very interesting i think that's by far the best part of the book well other than the than the lore mm. um but the mother's part, uh, 
I mean, I understand why you're saying what you're saying, but I think the the author was really trying f- for the reader to to cheer and f- to understand the uh, the main character, like Essen. But she is so annoying throughout the whole book. Uh, I could never sympathize with her. She was constantly bitching about everything. Uh, yes, me too. Yeah, she yes, she horrible. has like the the least like uh, sympathizable reactions of all time mm-hmm. yeah it's, 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 yeah it's not sympathetic at all besides that what you said about like the whole community and uh, how you know these concepts of oppression and racism are developed in this sort of like closed community um i i, I didn't like what they did with it like for example the whole part with the bugs uh the part where people mm. still seem to be Mad at origins. <laughs> getting a bit into the spoiler yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, no, I that's that something completely relevant for the story. <laughs> but yeah. but adversity, they're or like, oh well, yeah, we're like everyone else, and we hate origins. And like, th- why? I feel like it, they like thought of, thought it out well because they were trying to show how she by doing what she's she's doing a lot of things to make people not hate origins and not be racist. And exactly by doing all the things she's doing, she's making them more racist. So I think it worked for me. Her decisions and her actions made the people more scared. And therefore, they reverted back to the apocalyptic thinking of, you know, tribalism and being very oppressive and just just bigots. Well, I, we will talk about this specifically in spoilers, but I, I think it was like the whole part inside the community was just very poorly written it was not interesting at all um, all of these like small side quests they ha- they have to go on are i, I, I didn't mind it really giving me anything yeah I, I didn't mind it and the like culmination of it i enjoyed i think it was kind of action-packed and i felt like a lot of more stuff happened also i felt like that the first book i read i had expectations really high and the second <laughs> book i had expectations okay. super low because i didn't want to read it and also I shifted my point of view because in the first book I was the whole book I was like this bitch oh my god what is she doing to do next oh my god and then in the second book she did more horrible stuff even more horrible and I was like ah and what a bitch and then <laughs> then something switched in my head and I was like all these people are so damaged and all these people are so pushed and it's it's uh, just a self fulfilling prophecy about all this nonsense and all this horrible thing. And it came, it makes sense what they're doing now because if you really think about what they've been through, she's not that much of a unreasonable thinking character. She's just doing what she's been doing all along, and people are pushing her into doing it. And while she's trying to stop it, she can't. And that's kind of the point. I of the story agree in part, but I also, and again, I I don't want to say like this is necessarily a bad thing. Like it's okay. You can write a character who's bitching about everything. That, that that's fine. But the way she's bitching about everything really got on my yes. nerves. And I think it should. I think the, uh, the writer's intention is exactly that. But I don't think it has anything to do with like being discriminated against or anything. Like she's she's just she's just a really annoying. Yeah, I don't think that either. Person. Yeah, I, I felt in general she's just yeah. a bitch. <laughs> you all know that. <laughs> she's yeah. So I felt like it was intended. In the first book, I didn't know what was this character about, and in the second book, I became convinced that. By intention, we have to be. We, the the writer wants us to be super irritated yeah. by everything she's doing, and it's working well. I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah, I I agree. So so, but then there's this twist that okay, so we hate this character, but who the hell are we supposed to be rooting for? There isn't yeah, anybody left th- to be rooting for. That is kind of like my <laughs> my gripe with the two books so far. I mean, in the first that, book, that I, agree I, with. I did like. I think Damaya was interesting and you can kind of root for her because, you know, she's a poor child and everything. In the second book, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sienit is, is annoying. But at the same time, I was kind of rooting for her because, you know, she grew up in this sort of bubble where she, she was told every day that she mm. had to be perfect. And even though she was perfect, um, no one would really accept her at any time. So, mm. you know... I, you can see her progression and kind of like her breaking out of her shell. Um, so, you know, I was kind of rooting for her. 
until the end when she does something which doesn't make any sense as we talked about in the in the first uh, in the first podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep. In the second book, which I kind of feel like it makes more sense now after I've read the second one, uh, I feel I'm, a I'm still less annoyed. really annoyed. Yeah, it's still terrible. But in the I second book like again, I have point. no one to root for. Like even Nassen, hmm. it's easy to sympathize with her as opposed to the mother. She, because she's a child, like she doesn't know any better, uh, and like basically every adult around her <laughs> is. <laughs> failing terribly at, at <laughs> raising her as a, as a normal person. Like, I, I mm-hmm. don't blame her, but at the same time, it's very clearly she's building up to yes. be the, the villain of the, of the story. So, I don't really want to root for her. <laughs> exactly. So, it, it, it grew on me. I enjoyed it. And okay. I am glad I have read it. So, for me, I guess I'll say at the end that I would recommend continuing with the story, but Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a couple of other things I want to mention, like in general mm-hmm. impressions, non-spoiler-wise. Uh, I was kind of perversely excited about sexual interactions, <laughs> and I was severely disappointed. Like in the first book, I was like kind of trying to make up my mind: Do I mind this? Do I enjoy this? Do I want this? Do I not want this? And I was like, Yeah, give me that sex stuff. And in this book, nothing. Where is it? Where is the sex? I was expecting Stone Eater sex and it didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really care, to be honest. Uh, like, uh, until you you mentioned it, I wasn't really thinking about it. So, so this was a normal book, as it should be. The first book was very, <laughs> like, hit you in the face with, with oily dicks. Like, literally, this is what was in the book, if you haven't read it. And I was like, ah! so so this time I was ready for it, and I was like kind of looking forward to it, and then nothing. So I'm I was blue bolt. Like it was not such a relevant point for me in the first book. Like I I barely noticed at all. It wasn't relevant for the story or anything else, but it was no, no, very I know, striking I know. as like for a reader for out of nowhere. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I guess like because I I started reading. Uh, George R. R. Martin when I was yeah, in high school. Yeah, either the sex is there the whole time yeah. or it's not there. And this yeah. this wasn't there at all. And then there's like a paragraph of like wild <laughs> sex and then it doesn't happen ever again. And I was like, why? Okay. <laughs> so I was hoping there's going to be like, maybe she's trying to be edgy or I don't know why, but yeah. The the same goes with uh, Binoff or Tonki, how we talked about how she might be transgender. So I was like excited or interested or I don't know where this is going to go. Never mentioned again. So it's like, what? Yeah, I don't know. I One of the things I didn't like, especially, like, uh, as I said, I didn't like all the these stupid side quests they do, mm-hmm. which were not interesting at all. I, I didn't like what she did with her character because she could have been a very, very interesting character. Yeah, I've, that's, uh, I agree. Not only, like, related to her gender, but just in general. Yeah, of course. And yeah. she she literally only has one moment where she does something. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. Like, throughout the rest of the book, she does absolutely nothing. She's basically absent. It's and like two uh, moments, maybe, but yes, yeah. Right. Yeah, I was disappointed about her. I, that's, I agree. Please, please use this character. Like, you introduce it in the story, and you... I mean, you don't... It's not like you have 15 characters in that plot line. You have, like, five characters, and one is away for most of the book. So, essentially, that's you're true. you're down to four characters. Do something with them. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of strange another thing I want to mention is they finally stopped repeating and beating you over the head with the world's going to end so I appreciate that, thank you I stopped <laughs> saying it <laughs> and uh, I was I was uh, enjoying the swearing again uh, flaming earth's farts and flaking mm-hmm. rust and all that but I Th- felt there's like a lot of, of Joe's again yeah, the Joe yeah, his <laughs> Joe clicked Yes. yes, Joe did something, mm-hmm. which is yeah, fine. To... Like it's very unique. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to test this out because I didn't want to tell you now it's too late. But I want you to observe my face, <laughs> and I'm gonna like do something with my jaw, and you should guess my emotion because I feel like this is like you told me. I I didn't notice it at first, and when I read the second book, I was like, it was so noticeable, and I was like, yeah. how are there so many emotions that you could express with your jaw? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Talking about the writing style for a second, though, uh, and also talking about the emotions, um, something that, like, I tried reading some uh, 
some comments and reviews from other people and so many people were annoyed by the fact that uh, she uses the the second person and the present tense. Yeah, you told me. I, I don't get why. I, I really don't understand why this is such a big deal. On the other hand, something that did annoy me is that people can always read each other's feeling without talking mm-hmm. and like when <laughs> like the all the, they can always <laughs> yeah exactly they can always read between the lines they can always understand what people are actually meaning they're assessing your jaw with their yeah, exactly. something in their brain and then they'll they can see the shaking of your jaw how you're nervous yeah. that's how they do it i mean didn't really make sense to me like she's a she's a nine-year-old child How can she understand like what adults are saying and That's implying point I had, yes. and like hiding when they're like children don't do that like adults don't do that like that's a very very difficult thing to do but she does it over and over again with everyone with the adults it's kind of like okay but with the child i was like is she nine what it doesn't make most of the things she did doesn't make any sense yeah i, I forgot she was nine when i was reading it and then they mentioned it yeah i was like that's 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 like genius levels of uh endless game <laughs> uh, like children that are genius in a battle school that you haven't read yeah <laughs> no but it's like, like besides that i mean she does a lot of things that a nine-year-old wouldn't do and says uh, as thoughts that a lot that most she, uh, she felt like she was 25 or something yeah but <laughs> for some things i didn't mind it because you know because of her situation you can imagine she had to grow up faster and you can accept mm-hmm. she's a very smart person she's a very smart child but understanding like like what people are hiding when they're talking like that that i almost feel it's just to justify her father's behavior because when she's so young it makes more sense what he's doing if she was 20 and plus she wouldn't have he wouldn't have his power over her and yeah yeah that that's absolutely true so uh i uh I'm a, i have like a very quick list of stuff i want to just very quickly mention like good and bad things about the second book just to end uh like should you read this or should you not read this So very quickly, I like the action. I think she's very good at sequel bait. The book ends again yes. with like a thing that really makes you want to read I, the future. I feature. completely agree. Yeah, the racism I think is justified. It's very well explained. I for, for me, uh, I think uh, characters become better, deeper, like more interesting characters. Mm. I think it the character arc. Like it's so refreshing after reading the free body problem that the characters have so much depth <laughs> and they have so many emotions and even though we hate them, there is a lot about them that's interesting. So I like that. Yes. All the characters except Asun seemed quite realistic. Like nobody was like super unreasonable and dumb. I felt like. That's true. I have a uh, only one exception to that, but we'll talk about it in the spoiler section. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, no space travel and aliens, so I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting any of that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I know you were. You were hoping that that they were. Yeah, it, they were it, aliens, it was just but... like I, I was too much into sci-fi at the time because yeah. It left me with a lot of questions about my own morals and uh, hmm. you know what, what's good and what's wrong. Um, yeah. You know, if I, if I lived in this world, how I, would I feel? That's what I've, yeah, that, I've been that's asking. In that, in that uh, sense, very depressing. Yeah. Very crushing. Yes. So last point mm-hmm. I uh, was worried about and it's happening. <laughs> The powers are getting out of control, but that's expected. I wanted to know what so. you thought about it, because I remember you mentioned that you were afraid that yeah. the powers would get out of control in the second uh, book. Yeah, not 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 surprised. And I, so, I, okay. on this I disagree, because I think it's not completely out of control. I do think... So, on one side, I don't like how it went away from, uh, you know, the earthquake powers, because I think that was really interesting and very unique, and it went to just blah. Me too. Like much more uh, like run of the mill magic um so i didn't like mm-hmm. that but on, on the other hand i don't think it went uh, completely bananas i think it's still pretty grounded it in, didn't. in the in and the they lore. had a good explanation why it happened so that's good but i still 
and what it what's gonna happen in the third book <laughs> it's gonna escalate even more <laughs> So that was my like bad point about it, but I would really enjoy if it was more grounded, pun intended, and uh, they would really limit it, and it would be on a very small scale, and there would be more people doing it and uh, and stuff like that. That's what I was thinking it would be. Again, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. So I would recommend it from all the reasons I just mentioned. It's uh, better than the previous book for me. I I've, I would recommend it. Because I think it's uh, if you like the first book, if you like the world, if you like the lore, I think it expands on that, and it gives a lot of uh, juicy details, and mm-hmm. uh, the whole lore <laughs> of the world and the whole concept in the world is extremely interesting. Um, yep. But I think it's a very poorly written book. <laughs> I didn't feel that, but yeah, I read it kind of quickly, so a lot of stuff that Paulo notices flies over my head. <laughs> All right, so if you want to read it, I hope we've helped you make up your mind. Hit stop now, come back after you've read it. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the spoiler section. We've just talked like a lot about all the details and what we like and don't like, so I'll move that at the end of the episode. And for you guys who haven't read this or don't remember it well, so our discussion makes sense if you haven't read it. Uh, we're gonna go over the story and to recap all the important plot points and say what happened like to the characters, so it makes more sense. I'm gonna go over the story a little bit more in detail than last time, I think. Mm. We have more to say, I feel like. The first book was just like, this adventure happened, and yeah, that's it, and this character, what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and we like the world. This book, I feel like there was more to say. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can just like super short recap what yes. happened, just so we like, caught up what happened. So previous mm-hmm. book, there's a bunch of origins, they're trained to have superpowers yeah. and magic powers. Yes. <laughs> no, sorry, just earthquake controlling yeah. powers. Uh, then we find out that the characters were the same, yeah. so we have uh, Damaya, as Sienite, Sienit and uh, Esun. The husband kills the child because he's upset that he's got uh, the Roga powers. And... Uh, uh, he yes. runs away with Nasun, nine-year-old daughter, who also is very powerful with controlling earthquakes. And we yep. end up into this community underground that's called Kastrima, where people gather origins or rogas. Mm-hmm. So those are the people who can control earthquakes and have the superpowers or the, the mm-hmm. magic powers. And uh, Alabaster is there. That's yep. the, one of the main characters from the previous book. He's dying. He's half stone. And Stone Eaters are watching over him. Stone Eaters are still mysterious and we haven't learned much about them. And, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I guess that's... Well, we learned a lot about the, the obelisks. Yeah, also uh, Guardians, the most significant Guardian, Shafa, he killed our hunky boy in the previous book, which Nasun, uh, sorry, Esun is very upset about. He, he didn't kill the hunky boy, he was there, but uh, his friend killed the hunky boy. Okay, so... Never mind. Hunky boy smush. <laughs> Everybody's sad about that. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Okay. okay, so here's a question. What do you think about the Shafa, car- uh, Shafa chapters? I'm very much conflicted. <laughs> really? <laughs> but I, I, I really love these, chap- these chapters. I think they were extremely hmm. interesting. I wanted more of them. Okay. I wanted to learn more about him. And, um, I mean, knowing that there is another book... I'm hoping hmm. that, you know, more about the Guardians it will be explained be in, the, in that one. Um, I mean, I'm almost sure it will be there, but I think they were extremely interesting. They, For me, they were the best chapters in the book. Yeah, I would actually agree. I liked, I agree with you completely. I liked his uh, storyline a lot, but I'm conflicted because exactly what I didn't want to happen happened again in all these stories. They resurrected him. And he should have died, just or they shouldn't have have him like mm. almost die, or I don't know, just don't do this true debate with him dying. That's but what I at didn't the like. same time, he's kind of dead. Like he's yes. Like the book clearly says. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, he's can not. You, can you do it? Can you do what I'm thinking of? What, what am I doing? What am I supposed to? Do? June reference. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Golas. Ah, it's like <laughs> <Maybe>. a Gola. <laughs> ah, I didn't think about that because okay. I guess like because he didn't really die. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just uh, like making a joke. I thought but, he would say. Okay. It. <laughs> okay. Now that you're saying about it, that's a very very good point. Actually, you haven't read the sixth book, but and the fifth book, but he's mm. extremely similar to 
the Duncan's Gola in the fifth book. I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. That, that's a very good point. <laughs> that's a very good reference. Good job. I was sure you were going proud to, of like, you. Uh, they always do that. <laughs> I was not thinking about it. That, that's true. Yeah, so uh, we pretty much know that Alabaster also died and was resurrected into a super stone eater or something. That wasn't, well, that was, yeah, that's kind of implied. Yeah, we don't know that much. We'll mm. get into it. I just yeah. wanted to say, okay, so already two characters were kind of revived. <laughs> I just don't like characters being revived. That's all I want to say. Okay, I, fair I don't, enough. I, I, I hate it because of Star Wars and the recent tagline that said, nobody's ever really gone. And then everybody came back to life. Yeah. Just, just die. <laughs> just stay dead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's something I hate, for example, about Marvel Comics or about One Piece. It's my biggest concern about the superpowers. I'm worried they'll bring everybody back, so <laughs> just don't, just leave them dead. That's what I want. Fair enough. That's the only reason I was conflicted. But okay. I agree, he's a great character. Yeah. Works great. So three characters are very important. Uh, there's Shafa, the guardian, Nasun, the daughter, and Esun, the mother. And the load of stone eaters. So we have a storyline with Shafa and Nasun. So let's start with that. Uh, Shafa in the previous book is uh, blown away when the ship explodes and she's he's drowning, and he's going to have to make a choice about uh, becoming basically remotely mind magic controlled with a core stone in his brain by a power we don't know much about. And this power, if he agrees to it, will restore his body and have help him survive. But he will forget a bunch and become basically like a zombie or something. Yeah, Is yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty much it. Essentially, okay. he, he, if he gives in to the temptation of acquiring these powers and surviving, then mm. uh, the Earth will, will take over. Yeah. So the Earth, so maybe we should just... Well, I mean, yeah, but about the Earth, like, it's still not clear. Apparently the Earth has a will, like, it, it is literally, like, a character, mm-hmm. but it's not entirely clear what it means, like, if it's actually the planet, if there is, like, some spirit, if there is, like, a machine, yeah. If it's actually the planet itself, the core itself mm-hmm. being conscious <laughs> and mm-hmm. sentient and talking as a literal living god and the earth is literally the god, I'm gonna be amazed if this is actually the plot. So yeah, that's what it's, it's, not, it's not explained in the second book. I'm actually excited about this. It's, it's, it's really funny to me. Yeah. I wanted to say in the beginning of the spoiler section, so <laughs> to sum up this book, uh, I have uh, written down like a summary. I would say <laughs> that the plot of this book, or the plot of this whole trilogy, is to put the moon back into stable orbit by unlimited r- magic running on supercharged obelisk while stone eaters battle <laughs> God Earth, which is literally the planet itself, talking to people and mind controlling them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Also, <laughs> there, there's a lot of discrimination yes. here and there. Insert racism. <laughs> No. Yeah, so that was like a ridiculous plot point I enjoyed very much yeah. with the moon. Yeah. Okay, so then we have Nasun and Nasun is traveling with his father and his father is such a bastard. Like the worst person ever. Breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think her plot line was so conflicting to me because it's so depressing Yes. on so many different levels. Yes. Um, yes. You know how she, as you said, her father is the worst person alive. But despite that, she can't really leave her father, and mm. then she replaces her father with Shafa, who's also. <laughs> and even on top of that, he she had to leave her mother because she was afraid yeah. of her. Yeah, <laughs> because she was too dumb to to understand mm. uh, how to raise a child. Yeah, so they travel and they do a lot of murder. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's all up, up your alley. It's all depression. Depression points up your alley. It is really, it is really depressing. Um, enjoy again, that? the 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 fact that she <laughs> she couldn't she couldn't leave him. Yeah, it was, was really, it was tough. I it was know. like, and then at the same time, it's revealed that her mother trained her the same way that she mm. was trained in the fulcrum by breaking yeah. her hand and making her submit and being safe that she would never show her powers and all that. I was like, yeah. oh, damn. <laughs> bad. I mean, you understand it. You, you completely understand it. But at the same time, you understand also why she 
she doesn't realize why she grew up that way and why she's doing the things she's doing. Yes. Yes. Um, it was it was heavy. Heavy yeah. shit. And why she reacts that way when she gets to full to the Antarctic fulcrum and realizes, Oh, that's that's why my mother is like this. Mm-hmm. And so she decides to kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, so they travel to uh, places and they can't find where to go. And then it's revealed that the father wants to travel to somewhere where yeah. they can cure her of her superpowers. That was like, so convenient that you heard about this random thing uh, by almost, a traveler. I almost feel like he made it up just to have his like, last sliver of hope for his daughter. Like he wanted to rationalize his insanity behavior, insane behavior. Yeah. And this is how he rationalized it, and that's what he was like his last chance. Yeah. So they go to a place near the Antarctic fulcrum. It's the Found Moon and Jackety. Yeah, Jackety is the name of the village. Mm. Found Moon is kind of like this small community of of child uh, origins. So I was confused about this because the origin of fulcrum with all the magicians and people who can control Earth—that's that's all dead. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, Because the season started, the apocalypse started, which we didn't mention Alabaster, mm. that's him who did it, if you haven't figured that out mm. yet. And uh, they have like a few guardians and they have some mm. children with the magic powers and next to it is a village with still people without the magic powers and it's like a safe mm. place where people can, like the community, they keep calling it calm. So that's where both Shafa and Nasun end up. Yeah. Yeah, because they kind of trust the origins there because there are guardians. What they mm. don't know is that the three among like the three guardians, two of them are Earth zombies, mm-hmm. and uh, the other one is Shafa, who's resisting it, like <laughs> <laughs> half zombie. He's he's basically the I don't know the blade of the. <laughs> he's like a half vampire. Yeah, I was very amused by how they described there was a fight with Shafa before mm-hmm. Nasun got into the uh, village, Jackety, <laughs> and you start the book with him like almost dying. Yeah. And how he's all messed up and he cannot even stand straight and he cannot even remember anything. And then jump to this scene where he's like super vampire, super power, hunky boy, yeah. 7000 with lush <laughs> black hair and killing people left and right and crushing their faces with their with his hands. Yeah. I was like, what? Excuse me? What now? Is it him? What now? Is it the zombie? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So I guess Earth's superpowers are unlimited. Like I don't yeah. know how that happened. Like that's that's crazy. But okay. Well, I, guess. I mean, it is it is ten years later. Yeah, but still. So. I thought that the premise was that he's like barely alive, not that he's gonna be like, <laughs> you know, Superman. <laughs> yeah. But True that's enough. an interesting plot point later because he says mm-hmm. that if he was to sever this connection of this superpower and mm-hmm. being kept alive he would immediately become old and frail and die yeah so that's which is what happened to it. alabaster's guardian mm-hmm. like alabaster removed the the core from uh, from his guardian and she became old and then shafa killed her okay so at the same time we have the second storyline which nothing happens we talked about this at length in the, <laughs> which you will hear yeah. later uh, <laughs> so As soon as you know the Kastrimakom with Alabaster, Alabaster is turning into stone. Every time he uses magic, he turns more into stone. Stone Eaters are watching over him, and he's trying to teach Asun about like using the powers without the limitations of the fulcrum that they pushed into her head and brainwashed her about. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah it was alright. Um, and he also explains a lot of different things, like he spent the last 10 years on that island, which is like a big city with a very deep hole mm-hmm. and uh, it was built by the same people who built the obelisks and essentially mm-hmm. that civilization was the one which messed everything up yeah. because they yeah they, they did something to the moon mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. that's a good thing to mention we also learned that their son uh conundrum corundrum conundrum drum drum corundrum. died yeah he died unfortunately And we learn a lot about the magic, and uh, I'm sure I was imagining you cringing when this happened, when she was learning about the powers outside mm-hmm. of controlling just earthquakes and earth. Yeah. And they were describing how the silver lines and strings and all this like magic, and then what do what do we call this power? Ah, uh, yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> So they they never say magic in the book, and then they're yeah. like, okay, so 
It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was Did so confused by that. Why? Why? I don't know because I, everything else is so creative in the book about yeah. the lore. Like the, the, for that, she was just like, yeah, I can't think of any better name. Let's just use this. I was. I had two immediate thoughts that that jumped up into my head when I read this line. I was like, okay, it's kind of cute, right? Now the powers will go out of control. It's magic now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she's in the com and she keeps uh, going on side quests and missions and nonsense and not much happens and uh, the tension keeps building up with the with the racism basically with the people who are not origins and the people who are origins and a bunch of stuff happens that's not very significant until the end when it finally goes down people start panicking because another com attacks them for resources there's a big battle and uh, Nasun is super stupid about it doesn't help it uh, sorry Asun Asun is super stupid about it she makes a bunch of mistakes to make people angry she turns people to stone because she's practicing this new magic that can turn people to stone not just uh, earthquakes and people get super mad and she takes over she does like a coup she she scares everybody into submission and then saves the day like a dumbass she's, she's so bad yeah by killing a whole city <laughs> She kills everything. Like, okay, I hate yeah. this. I hate her so much. <laughs> She's like, yeah. in the previous book, she killed so many people. And in this book, she was like, so she was trying to learn uh, from Alabaster before he died how to use these obelisks, which we you learned that the obelisks are mm -hmm. storage containers for like magic power. And you yeah, can, they're like, basically yeah, magic amplifiers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can tune into them and you can use the power. And the entire plot of the book is is essentially that they connect a lot of them and you have so much power that you can shove the moon back into the orbit. Mm. So it doesn't, I assume, cause all these seasons because it flies mm. too close to Earth, was my assumption. Yeah, that's what I understood. Hmm. Uh, I think that's implied, but never said. Yeah. So that's like, kind of insane and clever, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess the point, yeah, is the moon, like, because it's in on... Uh, Irregular orbit. I don't know that hmm. they say they use a better word for that, but trajectory. Yeah, when it, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're very cute about all this terminology in the book. Yeah. First, they're like, "Oh, what do we call this silver slide? Oh, magic!" And then yes. somebody's like, "The moon is flying on a bad stretch. Oh, sorry, it's just moving badly because they <laughs> guess uh, they the person wouldn't understand trajectory." So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I just I, I kind of yeah. laughed at that. Yeah, that was pretty funny. So Nasun uh, learns a bunch of stuff, and she she like does everything wrong. She <laughs> turns somebody into stone because they're about to hit a child, and she cuts off her best friend's arm off. Yeah, but she, the, like, I, I mean, yeah, that was not that was not intentional. But at the same time, it of course, saved her none life. of these so, things were intentional. Yeah. But I mean, cutting the arm off was like the right thing to do. Yes, it's just the way still... she did it was scary, but. It was not the wrong thing to do. Turning that lady into stone, that was <laughs> kind of wrong. I felt even that cutting the arm off was super wrong. She could have still learned faster, be more calmer, and just like extract the thing from the arm in a different way. Yeah, but uh, all that started because Binov was being a complete hmm. idiot. That's true. So, long story short, Nasun. It's just sorry, as soon I keep my confusing mm. this. That's such similar names. I'm yeah, sorry. that's something that bothered me so much. I kept like in my head I kept thinking about one or the other and I kept confusing their names. So Esun just messes everything up and uh, we talked about this at length in mm. later part of this episode. That it's all about the vicious cycle of people living in fear and oppression and how it results into them being terrible and just being the reason why it's like that and all this. That's, that's how I understand the story. Yeah. Talking about yeah. instead about Nessun's story, I think that was really, really interesting. You know, much better than, than the other plot line. And mm. uh, I really liked how she went from, you know, essentially being shell-shocked and trusting the wrong people uh, for the wrong reasons at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she went from that to essentially, like, this is like her villain origin story <laughs> okay because i mean it's pretty clear towards the end that her plan is uh, to i mean exterminate someone or like hmm. you know reaching a solution which is which yes it, it involves i don't know either 
exterminating the whole human race or, or like all yes. the origins or like it's whatever. implied but yeah. not that uh, talked about much yeah so it's kind of like her villain origin story which is I mm. think it's it's very very well written so I really like that yes so at the same time while this is going on with Esun Nasun is learning and becoming more powerful and she learns also accidentally how to turn people into stone and mm. she learns like super quickly she's becoming like super 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 powerful super quickly yeah too quickly this is the part i don't like about the powers going out of control she's so much now she well, should have taken I more did, time to be like, like this i don't like how she improves so fast i mean maybe there is, there would be an explanation later honestly speaking i would have just preferred if uh, the other would have come up with something like you know instead of making one year pass Hmm. Like 10 years pass. Yes. So then it's like, well, she trains a lot. Too short of yeah. a time. I understand why exactly. she couldn't do that for She's like... Too young yeah, it would have fast. messed up like uh, a lot of other plot points. Mm-hmm. But if you imagine instead of a year, it's like 10 years, then mm-hmm. yeah, it's not not surprising so she becoming she's becoming more powerful and we got a bunch of dramatic scenes with the father trying to stop her and trying to check if she's finally getting cured and obviously she's not yeah. so at first Shafa the guardian like brushes him off but then for reasons I guess sentimental she goes to see his father yeah. and of course the father is just mad and he tries to yeah. attack her and again later she attacks her again and then finally she kills him yeah. by turning him into stone and uh, that has to be like the worst thing ever that would ever happen to anybody because considering she's like 10 by now that's insane yeah so even that for this reason i would appreciate if the time jumped a bit more and she would be much older i can imagine her doing this when she was 18 but not 10 yeah i think if she was actually 10 she would just stand there and be killed i i can understand why she grew up like more quickly than uh, people normally would given the environment mm. And, uh, you know, the events. Mm-hmm. So we also didn't say that Nasun... Oh, sorry. Esun... <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Esun is uh, learning all these powers and she turns somebody into stone and by that she also kills Alabaster because Alabaster is like, damn it, what are you doing? Stop it. And she Yeah, because she was about to, to kill everyone. Mm, to again. To everybody. And he every time he uses powers, he turns more into stone. And this is the final drop that kills him off and turns him completely into a stone statue. Yeah. By the way, we haven't talked at all, which I think is pretty fitting. We haven't talked mm. about at all about Dr. Friendzone. <laughs> I was sure there was going to be a sex scene. <laughs> and there wasn't any... No, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, didn't really care. No, it's just a relationship. He doesn't yeah. do anything. Like, he's the most Dr. useless Friendzone. character in the story. Like He doesn't do absolutely anything. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, uh, uh, there was a point. So, so Hoa is also there the whole time, yeah. uh, the stone eater from the previous book, and he's uh, been like almost killed, and then and another character resurrected. Damn it! He doesn't and really re- resurrect. Regenerated. He can't really die. So that was kind of established. So it's fine. So that's yeah. what we didn't talk about. The stone eaters are elaborated on, which I really enjoyed yeah. their descriptions and what they look like and how yeah. they move and what they do. Amazing! I would love to see this in a movie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks really interesting. The Description how it sounds when they move and turn their eyes mm-hmm. and how the different kinds of stones uh, outline their bodies and when somebody is turned into stone, what kind of stone and where it why and what. It was great. Yeah. I love, love this part. And uh, so Hoa is there the whole time, now regenerated after an attack of another stone eater and uh, transformed into, I guess, stony hunky boy. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he's super beautiful, I assume. And he's protecting uh, Esun, and he's the only reason Esun hasn't killed anybody. Everybody hasn't died and hasn't messed everything up even more. So thank God for Ahoa. Yeah, and, and for Alabaster. <laughs> <laughs> he's the real I- VIP. <laughs> yeah. And then it's mentioned that Hoa actually loves Esun. That's what he says. And... It's not really clear what what, mm. what he means. Yeah. So uh, there is a when the army attacks. Like we said, Esun kills the army, and also the army has a few stone eaters with them, and the stone eaters can not be killed, and the only way to stop them is to encapsulate them into an obelisk. So Esun does just that. She connects all the other obelisks to get even even bigger surge of power and super strength, and then kills the army and catches all these stone eaters into obelisks and saves the day. Yeah. That's how the story ends. Actually, no, the story ends with 
Na Sun's point of view. Uh, yeah, when she kills uh, the father. Yeah, she kills the father and also she's made a stone little friend in the meantime. Everybody's got a stone little lover, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got one, he's got steel, yeah. as Sun's got Hoa and Alabaster hot antimony. Yeah. Everybody's I'm assuming secretly fucking stone eaters. But I don't know if that's happening. I was worried it's gonna happen. I was so worried. I was worried that there's gonna be like a random sex scene like in the previous book and it's mm. gonna be something like, oh, Essen Bale walked for her next lesson. Oh, Alabaster Stone Dick is into antimony something. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> that would have been, yeah, uh, luckily it doesn't. I was worried that's gonna happen <laughs> based on the yeah. previous descriptions. <laughs> But that's how the story ends, and we got a bunch more things to say, which was, were the parts what we liked and didn't like, and how we disagreed. So, going back to the the thing I hated the most about the the book. So, hmm. in the essence part, the plot is essentially non-existent. Like she does nothing. <laughs> she does absolutely yes, nothing true. throughout the, the throughout the story. Even like when something happens, it's just an excuse to learn more about the lore, hmm. and. Uh, I mean, she's doing all of these lessons with Alabaster, but she's not really learning anything. Like, mm-hmm. what is she learning? Like, it's not clear. No, we, we don't say it, yeah, so I assume she's, like, listening to him yabber blabber about stuff. I don't know. But then there is, like, all of the things, like, oh, killing the bugs, or, like, oh, you know, they they killed one of our hunters, or, oh, you know, blah, blah, mm. blah, this happened. That's super boring and it's super pointless. It, <laughs> like it doesn't give me anything, and it really felt like side quests that you have to do just to progress with the main story. Side quests for me did the build up for the tension. I can be okay with you know just lore dump after lore dump and side quests if you know there is a a payoff at the end with some real plot development. And here's the thing, like the plot development. I hated everything about it, everything about the ending. So, first, I hated the fact that, you know, they are threatened, and they're like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And I thought, like, you have, like, 20 people who can, like, create earthquakes. Why are you scared of an army? Like, what can an army do? If you can literally crack the earth under them and kill all of them in one go. I thought it was because the Stone Eaters. But they didn't know about the Stone Eaters. Well, yeah. I mean, they did, like was... they they found out about the Stone Eaters later. So I I thought about the fact that yeah, it would have failed because of the Guardian, because of the Stone Eaters. True, absolutely true. But they didn't know about that at the beginning. They're just super scared and they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? We can we need to put these traps to seal the 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 entrance and like why. Hmm. Or, or like, oh, we have to do this thing with the with the bugs and like again, wh- why, why? You can literally just use the obelisk to kill all hmm. of them. Like it's so easy. Why are you not doing that? First of all, who's gonna do that? Like uh, Essen instead of, of being completely yeah, of useless and doing nothing. So, so except Essen, who's gonna do it? Like all of them are kind of iffy, like with the magic. Yeah, there are some children. So Essen is, is, is a bitch, she's mad, everybody's scared of her, she's already like messing shit up, and they're af- af- afraid to ask her, like that's what I thought. And then she does it anyway at the end, so... Yeah, that, she could have done it from the start. First, s- second point, which I hated, the fact that, you know, the guy is calm and he says, oh yeah, you can all come to, to our place, but uh, not the origins. And... Uh, I mean, I understand why he does that, and he explains it. It was just, you know, to mess with them and try to make them fight among each other. Okay, fair enough, but why does anyone fall for that? Like, it doesn't make any sense, and it felt to me she was just Hmm. trying to bring back the the racism discrimination card after... That's true. Like, literally a guy who's invading you, and... Like, there is a extremely high chance who's just, like, trying to trick you and just wants to kill all of you. He's saying, oh, yeah, um, by the way, you need to betray these people who have uh, let you live uh, up until now. And, by the way, if you try to kill them, they might kill all of you because they're extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. Why would anyone fall for that? Because they're idiots and it, the world is ending makes, and they've been like yeah, that the whole life. Yeah, but it makes life. zero it's... sense. It makes zero sense. I can understand if, like, one or two people fall for that because you can say they're, I don't know, whatever, they're stupid or, like, they, they, 
you know, they've been racist their whole life and this is just making it resurface, fine. But for the vast majority of people, they would have been, they should have been like, I'm not trusting any word you're saying. You're just trying to make us fight among each other. And besides, even if we try to actually fight the origins, we can't live here if they are all dead. And even if we try, let's say, you know, we actually go to the big city and we live there and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we need to leave them behind. They can kill all of us at any time. (laughs) <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you? Why would you make yourself an enemy of someone who's immensely more powerful than you, who's at the moment your ally? Like, I, I, I can't understand. I felt like on edge with this. I understand. I, I hated but at the same... all of it. I hate all about it. <laughs> I was like prepared to hate it and it worked for me I I don't have anything new to say it just came together for me in the sense of people you know if you look at minorities living in other countries and racism in real life and also on top of that all the stress about the world ending and all this like no food and everything going to an end and on top of that all the racism that they've been beaten their head into it's almost like they were mental sealed in to the free body reference yes. no <laughs> I mean okay I understand what you're saying and I would agree like in a normal situation that's what would happen and but the, the comparison with real life doesn't really work here because first this is the apocalypse it's not like a normal situation mm. so that makes it more extreme and more yeah exactly that's why people should break out of the racism and trust these people more easily well, for exactly me, because they, mm. they they've lived together for a year at least and uh, mm. they have survived only thanks to them and again they are extremely powerful in an apocalypse why would you want an enemy with, like why would you not want dumb. them as allies yes. like it doesn't make any sense it's super dumb and it's gray, crazy and it's terrible and I think it makes sense because I, I feel the opposite like the apocalypse and the fact that they've been living together so long and the fact that it doesn't make sense and all this, I think because of the pressure, people who are hurt and stressed out and like at the verge of collapsing and having a mental breakdown always revert to their most basic, simplest, dumbest So trusting an enemy who comes into their base and says to like abandon their allies? like You know, they, they are living in this community with these people and most of them are doing it just because they have to. And That's they are true. thinking of them as tools and necessity. And the leader, who's also one of those, is keeping it in check. And most of the stills, the people who don't have the... They don't have the powers, we shall call them racists. <laughs> They've been that their whole life. And the, most of their lives, most of the people, they didn't have to deal with these others. And they have been beaten into their mind that all these people are bad and dangerous and anything we do with them is horrible and we have to be living yes, with them. Yes, but at the same time, we had the story about, which I think was one of the most interesting points, the story of Ika, Waika, yeah, okay. I don't know, when she said that she came out as an origin and actually her her village, which is Kastrima, so all of her people are living there. It, hmm. it Like it's said very clearly. They basically accepted her. And now, all of yeah, a sudden, yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, we accepted you, but, uh, you know, after you've done all of these things for for us. It completely makes sense to me because I see it happen like, oh, oh it's so sad, but I, I think it makes sense because you have this tension and this, like, you have to give in and you have to do things that are uncomfortable for you. And it builds on top of it and but builds on top of it. I would it. agree with and you if it had been prepared bet- in a better way. Like, for example, if you had said that, for example, they were completely at the mercy of, of this enemy. And uh, they had reason to trust the enemy. I would agree. Hmm. Or like if there was like some other like external force to make them distrust. But and, the, yeah. just a guy appearing and saying, oh yeah, we're invading you, we're winning. And uh, by the way, yeah, w- all I'm saying is absolutely not trustworthy, but yeah, you should abandon your ally and trust us. Like that. That doesn't sit well for me. It doesn't sit well uh, because I think you don't think that the people... Like, I think the people would already be thinking of all the origins as enemies all along. And they would be just putting up with them. And now something's gonna 
come push comes to shove you have to bread break bread i don't know what all these phrases are but it's it shit's gonna go down it, this is gonna end somehow and in their mind it's gonna end worse when the magic people go mad and they don't want that and they want anything else so they're doing everything they can they to make the magic people go mad like that, that, that and that's exactly the point of the story and that's why i felt like they they uh showed it well because all the characters and all the communities they all come to the same madness conclusion that's terrible and sad and i feel like true that's what you said it's terrible and i think it makes sense because i it don't happens. know T- to me like this was just completely unbelievable i i couldn't i i didn't like any like of the it part where nothing happens and as soon as just sitting there and like trying to control it and ika and all this like management of people who are getting like angry as a mob it all escalated like all the side quests each of them escalated this conflict did did it Until really it just was like... madness Yeah, I think so. Like first the box, she was standing there and everybody was watching her while a man was screaming and dying and she didn't do shit. And then she finally like, okay, I have to do it, okay. And then the other lady who's also one of those killed him off because so in the eyes of normal people that's pretty stressful as far as tolerating magic people is concerned. And then they send her up and she wants to negotiate and she comes back down hurt and she's messed up and almost kills people again. So okay, that yeah. help. And all this going back to about that part. Like the negotiation part I didn't mind, but before that, so she she turned uh, the drunk woman into a stone, right? Yes. By mistake. Whatever. And yeah, people trust her even less, blah blah blah. Okay. But she literally just learned that power. Okay. Not even mm-hmm. for a second But, she thinks, oh, they are invading us. Mm, if only I had this special power to turn enemies into stone. I, you know, I could use it to save everyone. Mm. <laughs> It's dumb. But I think she's just a bitch and she's dumb too. But anyway. She could have come up, <laughs> like just... the author could have come up with any excuse for her not to use it. Like, I don't know, like the magic doesn't work like i don't know just come up with something but the fact that she doesn't mm-hmm. even think about it she doesn't even consider that the fact that oh yeah i could use this power to save everyone and win the the battle by myself it, it's mm. complete nonsense she redeemed that by actually winning the battle by herself but yeah but I she does it at the end and, and like by making by making like tons of people die and like including her own and also killing them in a awful way she's messed up in all sorts of ways and my answer is she literally didn't think about it because she was worried about other stuff <laughs> I, 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 which is I dumb mean, and that's the point she's super dumb about this yes i, I, I agree can't, she's i super can't accept dumb. it as an explanation <laughs> <laughs> like she like like if you look at how she thinks it makes sense to me that she wouldn't care about this because She's even like considering leaving any second now. She doesn't care about the place. No, I agree. She doesn't care about the place. Like I, I completely understand that. But the fact that she found out this new power and then she never, she literally never thinks about it for a single second. That that because she didn't want to. I think she, not only did she not think about it, she didn't even want to help and kill the army. That's what I felt. But then she's actually doing it because that was the point that broke everything, and she was finally for pers- So I did and finally convinced and you know with Ika and what happened that was the moment where she was okay no voting fuckers I'm going to be in charge now and this is the time I decide I'm going to help you and I'm going to help you now because now I give a fuck and I'm going to take this into my hands I mean, and then she did it and before that she didn't care I feel like I don't know I I, I find it really hard to to justify any of her actions like in the in the last one of the pages <laughs> like to me none of the things that happen make any sense okay so she she takes a lot of stupid decisions throughout the story and i think that's part of the point and i accept it but it's kind of like in the first book like i can understand like when she's on the boat and she makes the mistake by of destroying the other boat but revealing that she's an origin and so then she has to kill everyone Hmm. Like I can accept that. Like yeah, it's a stupid mistake, but I can understand that that's a problem that that can happen. Hmm. But the second thing she does when she turn like she shuts down the volcano that didn't make any sense. Hmm. Like literally she just revealed herself. Like th- that's the kind yes, of stupid thing yes. like I can't accept. Like if sh- she makes like a stupid mistake because of inexperience because of like 
I don't know, she's being impulsive or whatever, fine, I don't mind. Mm. But when she makes a stupid mistake just out of the fact that, I don't know, what she's doing is, is illogical, then, I don't know, it, mm. it, I, I just can't accept it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I, I think she's still horrible, and there are many things she does that don't yeah. make much sense. So, but the final point worked for me. Okay. That's why I liked it. The other so, thing that so I, I couldn't really understand the the meaning, other than I don't know, from for narrative reasons, is, hmm. and this is like the only thing I really didn't understand about the the nonsense part, which is mm-hmm. she's brought to the. Antarctic uh, fulcrum by Shafa and I understand why Shafa and the other guardian go there because uh, they understand they they you know that something happened there to the guardians and uh, they need to go there to kill all the origins because it's kind of implied that that's what happens to origins during a season and that's fine but to me it didn't make any sense that they brought Nasan along. Like, why did they bring her along? That's true. That was... Uh, I asked Paolo before this to clarify what happened there. Uh, you haven't listened to that, but I agree. That I was so confused. Like, what, why is why? she there? Yeah. The only answer I have is she's too dangerous to be left alone. Uh, oh, okay, but... Like, it serves a reason in the greater plot. But besides that, like... It... Mm, maybe that's the real answer, <laughs> yes. To serve the plot. I mean, I guess <laughs> your point is probably the best one, like, because she just killed a guy, like, one of the other one of the other children, but... I don't know. Mm. I can't really imagine any... Shaf- Shafa's too attached, she's too attached, she would keep crying yeah. and killing people if she wasn't with him, so... I yeah, guess, I but guess. I don't know. I didn't really like the fact that we are given zero explanations about it. Mm. But just to round up... We'd like to say that we'd recommend it, I think. Yeah. I mean, I again, I recommend it if you read the first book. I think it makes sense. And uh, probably the third book will be good, I hope. Mm. But yeah, just as a book in and of itself, I think it's, as I said over and over again, I think it's poorly written. So to end this discussion, I have a prediction. What's going to happen okay. next in the third book? My prediction is... That Nasun's gonna become sorry, Esun, David, Esun's gonna become even a bigger bitch. She's gonna be <laughs> super stupid, and she's gonna be like, okay, all oh, these people still hate me, even though I help them so much. And then she's gonna find out all these stone eaters are going to use me as a tool, and they don't care who I am as a person at all. And fuck Hoa because he also hates me, and I everybody hates me. And then Father Earth, freaking flaking rust, I'm gonna crush the moon into Earth and end everything. And Nasun's gonna be like, oh no, money, mummy. And then she's gonna have to kill her mother. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the other way around. Uh, Essen is set up to be... I'm pretty sure that the opposite is going to happen. So... Nasun is the super villain. Nasun is clearly the villain. Like, she's the one who okay. will try to destroy everything. Like, I don't know what her plan actually would be. Like, if it's to destroy everything or just to kill all the origins. I don't know. Yeah, like, but she, she would clearly be the villain towards the end. And I think Essen will clearly be the hero, the heroine, I guess, uh, towards the end. I think either, like, there could be, like, a dark ending where, like, Essen has to kill her daughter, or Essen mm-hmm. will sacrifice herself for her daughter, and so kind of redeem herself and convert Nasun to the to the good mm-hmm. side again. To end, I think we both feel like the conflict, Nasun, Essen, is going to be yeah, the final. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's really easy to see, I think. So I hope that's more than just that. Yeah. That's my wish for the next book. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope you've listened to the recap. And after that, our super discussion in depth, what we liked and didn't like and how we disagree about stuff. I hope that was interesting. And I think I'm reading the next book. Paolo's already reading it. <laughs> so we'll see you sometime. Not sure when <laughs> about the last final part of this trilogy. <laughs> Thank you for recording this, and uh, it was fun talking. I'm really happy we don't yeah, agree on something. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, this is probably the, the time we disagree the most. So we'll see what happens okay. with the third book. See you in the next one. See you. Bye. And the final score: twenty-three creativity points. Pretty good, but forty-three hate points. Damn. Paolo really hated this book. (laughs) I don't think he did, but he found a lot of things that he didn't like. 
I actually liked it quite a bit. Well, thanks for listening. Rate us on Apple Podcasts and coming up on the future episodes. The next two will be the final book in the Broken Earth trilogy, Stone Sky. And then following that, we're gonna do another roundup episode about the whole trilogy. So stick with us until the end to see how our opinions changed when we looked at this with some distance in hindsight as a whole. All right, see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.